Howdy folks, just putting on some extra lighting. I've, uh, one of the things I've done of late is I've improved my lighting in here. And uh, I've got these kind of lights. They're sort of strip lights, they're LED strip lights. And I've got uh, another one to show you here. And you can buy this one. I don't know if you can see this one, but this is it's not quite as long as the other ones, but it's uh, it's got a, a motion detector, okay, um, unit there in the end. It's exceedingly bright, very bright. Um, you can m operate it, you know, just like that on the cord, or it'll come on automatically using the the uh, motion detector. Yeah, anyway, they're Black Friday deals. If you go to Walmart, that's a $30 light, normally. It's now selling for $9.94. So get along to onto the Walmart website, or get along to your local Walmart. You'll be able to find them. They're a deal, I tell you. I've got another one up there. It's so convenient, because as soon as I walk in here in the morning, whenever, the light just comes on automatically. And I don't have to remember to turn it off. Okay, sales pitch over. <laughs> Simon, we didn't come here to listen to. I know. But, you know, I couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it, could I? What am I doing? Um, I am here um, getting ready to do some glazing, actually. So, I thought we'd do just a very basic video, a quick video on how to do raw glazing and what you're going to need to do it, okay? Um, I don't know the science of this entirely. I've pretty much learnt how to do it just by doing it, you know. So it's difficult to find information out there on draw, raw glazing once firing stoneware. So these are fired up to cone 10 from, from raw. All right. So well, I've got all my uh, pots there on wear boards, as you see. Always work off wear boards. You don't want to be working with pots directly on, on the, you want to keep them on wear boards because it makes them easy to move, you see. You've got to keep your pots mobile and quick and easy to move from one part of the studio to the other. If you haven't got wear boards, you're going to be all fetching and carrying, fetching and carrying on little bits of wood and rough sawn off pieces of splintery, you know what. <laughs> Okay, so get yourself organized. Space the pots out a little bit. You don't want them all kind of jammed up together. Okay, so give yourself a little bit of working room on your wear boards for the, uh, every, you know, the room to be able to pick it up and put it down. You don't want it too close. One thing I have done, because these have been made a little while now, they're not recently made. You want to just have a look, make sure inside, there isn't anything and what I recommend is I don't recommend you don't get something and try and and, and um, get the dust out the only way you do it is by, like this that's the only way you do it don't use anything like a brush or an implement you cannot do that on raw wear I guarantee you'll smack the side of the pot and you'll break it that's why I'm saying blow it out just give it a puff out yeah Like this. I've already done this row. If there are any pots, for example, if you want to do some glazing and some pots are a little bit different and you want them in a different design. So these these kind of tankers which I did recently, a bit of a departure. I may do more of them, I quite like them. Um, but they've got like a rolled along the bottom there. So you know all, all of those ones I'm putting uh, on a separate board. Just get organized, that's all it is. That's all it is, organization. Right, so uh, also I've got the, you'll notice I've got a spray bottle, a, a jug with a water and some, a sponge. Okay, another jug here, with which is what I'm gonna use to do the glazing. The glazing is done in two parts. 
This is going to be the first part I'm going to show you. Uh, this is nothing new. You've seen this, me do this many times before. Uh, so you just have to take take us as you find us, you know. Um, right. There's a little bit of a system here, you see. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go like that. Now I encourage you have a go at doing this. I wish I somebody had shown me how to do this years and years ago. That's what I'm showing you. Take note. <laughs> so yeah, I want to get the glaze um, the right thickness, of course. I don't know how you describe that. The, th the thickness of cream. I know it from experience, just by looking at it, if it needs water or not. But you may, you may not be, but I mean, you can learn this sort of stuff about glazes. Righty ho. Okay, let's proceed. Put this back. Uh, right, so take the first one, take this jug. What we're going to do is take a half jug or so, like that. I'm just going to pour it in inside, like that. Okay, and now I'm going to turn my wrist like this and pour it out like this. Okay, you see that? Let the drips drop away. And now, I spray the outside of it. What could be simpler? It's pretty simple, isn't it? All right, now you're gonna see, you may see a little bit of overspill over the top here. Don't, don't, don't worry about that, okay? Because it's gonna have glaze on the outside. And that'll just go over that, you see? Again, just pour in. Okay, and now I've got to, that's the bit, that's the difficult bit to learn, what I just did there. That turning of my, of my wrist around, you know. Now, why are we bothering to spray the outside? What earthly good is that? Well, Think of it like this, the inside of the, the, of the pot has got all this wet, gluppy glaze adhering to it, but the outside is still bone dry. So by putting, when we put the glaze on the inside, the, the clay of the wall of the pot is expanding and sucking that moisture into the wall, right? In order, in order to equalize out the, because uh, we could run the risk of it cracking or splitting, uh, because of the pressure for expansion from the inside, having a wet glaze on the inside, it's sucking it. And because it's not fired, it's, it's, it, it's weak and it can split open. So to counteract that and to offset the stress of that, we use the, the spray bottle to wet the outside of the pot. to equalize out the moisture content in the wall of the pot. So it's not all coming from the inside, but there's some coming from the outside too, to counteract that, uh, that expansion, you see. So that's, my theory is that this, I'm not saying it does categorically, but that it can help prevent the rim splitting through the excess moisture content on the inside. I hope that makes sense. It sounds complicated, I know. I didn't read about doing that. I don't need, even know if it is correct, technically what I'm saying, but it's just something I felt to do um, to safeguard just in case. And <laughs> 
I haven't been having any problems, so I'm, I keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Dee 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 dee. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Ooh. We were in the picture there. Okay. Right, let's give it a little spray. Okay, just a. Like that. That's all it needs. So, whatever glaze you work with, maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't know, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, I don't know what would happen if I put that in the kiln, there'd be a horrible mess on the shelf. Maybe it would destroy all the other pots in the kiln. Maybe, maybe this, maybe that. So, but it, most, most, in most cases it will work. All you need to do, just take your, pretty much with the, 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 this glaze, I've not really altered it. Technically I have altered it. I added 2% of bentonite to it just two percent because I, I I thought that in the in the shrinking of the you know as when the pot is being fired it it shrinks doesn't it um, th th this is that recipe flint kale in feldspar whiting talc and bentonite I added two two ounces to that total which is about two percent uh, don't red iron oxide is only if you're making celadon, okay. But using that recipe, which was basically the same recipe apart from the two ounces of bentonite, I didn't change the recipe. So, for the first time I did this, I applied it to a pot that was not dry. And what did I observe? I observed the, the glaze on, on the outside of the pot, and I observed the pot shrinking even continuing to shrink, of course, because it wasn't fully dry, and the glaze remaining just on the, on the surface. And I thought, oh dear, that doesn't look good because it's just going to fall, fall down off onto the kiln shelf, you see. So what I thought was, well, instead of glazing it when it's leather hard, let me glaze it when, when it's bone dry because it's already shrunk, you see. It hasn't got any more shrinking to do, only the shrinking in the firing. And I did that, and it worked. It worked the treat. And these pots now come out as good as ones that have been best fired. No different, you can't tell the difference. And I completely eliminated the cost in time and labor and gas in having, in, in having to do that, you see. So, really worthwhile doing. Also you get a much better cohesive feeling of the creativity that's building in the studio, making, going from one thing to another. You're not sort of got this rude interruption with, of, oh gosh, I've got to stop everything now, go and pack and fire this wretched biscuit, bisque kiln, you know. You don't have to do that. So the, as it were, you know, the making of this pot, although the physical making is now finished, isn't it? But it's sort of like right on with the glazing. It's like, so, so the glazing merges with the actual making. It all becomes sort of, I don't know, integrated together. So you may, another question that sometimes people have, well, why do you glaze in such a way, Simon? Why don't you just cover the whole pot in glaze inside and out like you used to do when you used to do double dipping you know when I had my with when these were bisked you could double dip why do I do it like this in two stages because it's more it is more t time consuming um, and I could I could and I have <laughs> Till I decided it wasn't a good idea. But I, I have done the double dipping with these. You've got to be a bit careful because they're raw, you see. It's also quite a palm stretch for me. Other people have got a bigger, a bigger hand, you know, you might, you, you might find you can hold it in one hand like that. But um, what I found was when I saturated the inside and outside of the pot at the same time, 
What what happened? Did I just spray that with water? I can't remember. Do it again just to be sure. No harm done. <laughs> yeah, so I, I came to the conclusion, well what is actually happening? You know, uh, the wall the wall of a the wall of a pot. I'm just thinking to myself, I need a little piece of clay to show you what's happening there. So, I don't know if it's going to be a good, this is a bit of an off the cuff kind of, some shards from some students' pots or whatever from outside there. So if you were to, let's imagine, you see this piece of clay. So when you apply, uh, when you apply water to, to the clay, you're not going to see this, but you can see it there on the outside. Well, what's happening is, and you notice it's drying quite quickly, and that's because this is very porous, okay? And the, the moisture, the water, has been sucked into the wall, into the wall of the pot here, isn't it? Going in that direction from the outside, going that way. So what it does is, when you've got a liquid or glaze on the outside of a porous piece of clay, as it's absorbed into the clay pot, into the wall of the pot, it pushes air that's trapped in, in, the, in the wall of the pot as well. It pushes the air out the other side, you see. So you get water coming in from this side, like that, and you get air going out from the other side. Now, now, so what I did was I used to, I used to glaze inside and outside the same. And then I, I, re I looked at some of the pots that came out and I noticed there were like little places here and there where clearly not just the glaze had lifted off, but the clay body underneath had also lifted off. And I realized that that was air that had been trapped inside the pot was being expelled and in the process was lifting a piece of clay and glaze and allowing the air to to get out. That's my theory. Could be completely up, up the creek there. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I might be totally wrong. It's just my, I'm just thinking out loud, you know, because I never had this actually explained to me in any way. So I thought, well, okay, so if I glaze the inside first, right, let it dry back like, we, like what we're doing now, then it'll push the air out this side, and then when it's dry, when it's dried off, somewhat, maybe not completely burned dry, but, you know, a bit more, a bit later, so you come back a bit later, you then glaze the outside. So when you glaze the outside, it pushes the air back out through the other way. Sounds totally bizarre, isn't it? No, it doesn't. It's, it's, it's science. <laughs> well, they say it's science, so it must be true. You know, that's what we get to we've been told lately, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. Anyway, all I can say is that since I started doing that, I didn't get that problem anymore, you know, with the crack, with the, that piece cracking and lifting off. It was like a little vent hole, you know, that was sort of the, the, the air that was trapped was escaping by. Interesting. Maybe there's somewhere where you can read about all that in a book or something. Or maybe there's somebody out there who's more knowledgeable than me who could explain it. If so, if, if you do have a better understanding of what I've said, then please get in touch with me, enlighten me. I'd like to know more. I, you know, I just... Uh, some of these things you just have to figure out and other things you just... You never know the real reasons. You just... You, you know, you just do certain things because you know they work but you might not know the science behind it. That's a little bit how pottery started in the first place, isn't it? Because if you think about it, people, you know, when clay, when they first discovered that if you took clay and if you burnt it, it became hard and brittle, like a rock, or like a real hard piece of material. I mean, like, how did they, how did they discover that? Well, probably because they had a fire on the ground a campfire or something and they noticed in the morning 
maybe when they cleaned it up, they noticed that the ground had turned absolutely rock hard where the, where the fire had been. So man learned that he could burn clay and by doing so could render it uh, a permanently changed and hard. So then it does, of course, it doesn't, doesn't take much, does it, to go from there to think, well, if I made some certain, you know, vessels of certain shapes and then, um, and then I, uh, we got them, you know, to a certain temperature, then we would have a permanent piece of pottery, which is what they did, I guess. I don't know if they did, I'm just assuming, I'm just, you know, using my imagination. Got to use the imagination, haven't you, a bit sometimes. Yeah, anyway, so... Now these could be, and I haven't really ascertained yet properly how long to properly leave these, you know, when I, what, once I glaze the inside, waiting now for how long until I should glaze the, the rest of it. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but let's just pretend I'm going to take a risk and just, just see if we can, I'll show you uh, how to, Ooh, okay. So now the next stage of the operation so long as there isn't any horrible big lumpy bit of clay here on the top, so long as it's, while it's wet and if you get a dribble when you're doing it, just wipe your finger like that, as you see I did there. Um, if you have one, say for example like that one, you see it's got a little bit of a, a droplet of clay there, just do that, you see, before you do the next operation which is going to be what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take this, I've got to spread my palm like that, you see. It's a bit of a stretch. Right, down, it, down into the glaze like that, right the way down, make sure I don't get any on the bottom. Okay, hold, two, three, four, and then up. Okay, now just hold it like that, let, let it drip off. Somewhat. And now, whoa, you're going to put it on the, on the web all like that. You can just lift up your arm like that and a droplet will come down to the end of your finger. You can use that droplet just to wipe over uh, the, the, uh, the lip there. Generally speaking, you always get a mark where you've put a finger like that. That's very common. Um, uh, if that happens, don't panic. What we do is, any in any case, when I come round to before I, I, I band these on the banding wheel to do the decorating bench over there, I would make sure that that was, you know, as it's as good as it can be there. Just where the finger had touched, you know. Okay, so that is, that is following on directly from, I'm probably not gonna do these right now, I'll probably go, go down the line here and do the rest of these and then We'll see, you know, either tomorrow morning or later today, I will do what I've just done there, glaze, dip the outside only like that. Okay, have a go, just take one of your regular pots that you, that you, you know, is part of your, uh, part of your range of work that you usually put in the kiln. Just take one of them and instead of bisque firing it, uh, do a raw glaze like this using your same glaze that you would but do it on a, a dry piece I would recommend okay that's about it so that's how to just some thinking some thoughts about raw glazing uh, I showed you my recipe there um, have a go at doing it it'll save you time it'll save you money it will help your workshop rhythm be maintained better than stopping and starting and bisque firing and you know then having to go that route it's, it's more this is quite a lot quicker as you can see I mean this piece now is is virtually ready you see for 
for decorating, isn't it? Now, if there are some little, uh, you see what's happened there. Now I will, with a, a blade, I will just reduce those down, okay? So they're not like that. That's just something, to, that's a little practical thing. Some people don't mind those. It depends on the glaze that you're using. I don't particularly like them on this setup, what I'm doing here. But on other glazes, when I get some runs like that, I don't mind it. It's just, it's down to the, what you're dealing with, you know. So, yeah, have a go though, do that. Let me know your results. It'll be good to know. Um, I think you might be pleasantly surprised. Okie dokie, folks. Well, I think that's about it. If you're interested in a t-shirt or some pottery or some tools, you know where to go. Go to my website, uh, simonlidgepottery.com. Apart from that, yeah, it's kind of towards the end of the afternoon here. The light is, um, we've still got light. It's actually remarkably mild outside. That's a December Pennsylvania sky. <laughs> yes, it's actually quite nice, quite pleasant. Okay, folks, have a go at some raw glazing. Let me know your results. And meanwhile, I will keep practicing. <laughs> and you do too. All right. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.